Okay, we are recording. Madam Chair. All right, let's get started. November 21st, utilities meeting. First issue, water sewer capital facilities charge update. So what you have in your packet is the PowerPoint from last Tuesday's work study presentation. Um, basically it had the recommended CFCs, capital facility charges, that included the uh, existing future and the 50% interest allowed. That's what we're proposing. Um, council supported moving ahead with this. Um, so at this point, we're working on a staff report and an ordinance to adopt. Um, and I know you've already seen this at Utility Committee. This is just more of a memorialization of the process. So we'll, our hope is to get this done in 2017-16, but if not, we can do it first meeting in, in January, but right now we're looking at a 12-13 or 12-20 ordinance. Presentation overview. It's probably been too soon to get any feedback on it. Word hasn't really gotten that much. Have we, have we sent this to stakeholders? So I sent the um, the actual report that Katie Isaacson did. I sent that to home builders and I had a conversation with um, Teresa Lisa. Zinsky. And I told her I'd be more than happy to come talk about it if anybody has any questions. Um, and she said they didn't. She didn't think there'd be any. Issues. Yeah, she was pretty not interested. Right. Okay. So we. She was appreciative, but she was like, you know, she said normally. Does she have this presentation? No. Okay. Could you, I get could, it to her. Would you get it to her just sure. make confirm that she doesn't have any questions or concerns? Okay. Maybe even to Mike Eliasson as well. Yeah, Mike and Teresa both. Okay. And who's Mike? Mike Eliasson. He's the real estate. He's the Realtors Association's um, executive director. I think is his title. Okay. Sent to HP. It had to be done. It was just one. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting is, is that this process she went to her math is exactly when I first got on the council. Mark and I did this exact same math, and nobody believed us. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> the council pretty much dismissed the work we did. So then we have to go hire a consultant mm -hmm. to tell us. The say very it's, it's math. You know, yeah. I know, but we aren't professionals in this right. field, so she did a much more in depth. She, she did exactly. This is the same conclusions, and it's 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 math that we can divide it by the ERUs, and right. there's a capital plan, and right. yeah, but anyway. Uh, well, 12 then? Okay, so well, 12. I'll let Thomas talk about that while you have in your packet. And you'll be seeing probably at the next meeting, which is our next meeting. I, I guess we're having a December meeting, right? It's going to be. It's it December. If we got a council meeting on the 20th, that's being worked. We're still the Monday the before it. Yeah. The Monday before, so it should be the 19th. Yeah. So we will have a December utility committee, committee meeting. Hopefully in that packet we'll have well 13. But what you have in this packet is the the actual well 12 application for the water right change and the preliminary permit to drill well 12. And like I said, I'll have Thomas go a little bit more in depth on that, but we'll see another packet just like this for 13 in December. So Thomas. 
Yeah, I, the only reason you don't have the Will 13 one is because they're, it's in the mail. Um, we got the letter and I talked to them and they said, hey, you got both your permits. And I said, awesome. And then I started digging through it and I'm like, 13 is not mentioned in here. And he said, oh, we, we forgot to mail it out. So it'll be here this week. Um, really exciting that, that, that we got this as soon as we did. As normally these processes take much longer. Um, and I did send an email to Tom over there and just thank them for processing this quickly for us. Um, if you read through it, I mean, there's a lot of fine print in here. And uh, when you go through the process of perfecting a right, it's really a process. There really isn't a, you know, they don't just hand you a piece of paper and you're good to go. So there's a lot of conditions that we have to meet, um, none of which were, uh, none of which were unanticipated. We actually had Jay Cook. Doug Wood, who kind of write the, the permits, we had them coordinate with our consultants, and so we actually wrote about a third of these conditions. Um, and the reason that you do that kind of behind the scenes is so you don't get slapped with something weird when you get the letter. Um, so pretty standard stuff in here. We've got to consult with the tribes. We have to um, we have to model the impacts. We agree to mitigation, uh, all those sort of things but nothing that was out of the ordinary um, and the attorney didn't see anything that was weird either. So you'll get the exact same letter with most likely the exact same conditions um, for well 13. We just had a meeting this morning going over the contract to drill for 13 and, and making sure that we're prepared paperwork wise for that process. When do you think we'll start pounding it? My hope is January. How long will that take, do you think, or you don't know sometimes? It, that's a hard question, um, but you know, it, there's, there's different ways to drill, there's different timelines, and my hope is about six weeks. Um, shoot for six, hope for four, um, but it, is, it, it will have to be a 24-7 operation, so they'll, they'll actually set a job shack and have rotating crews. Are we in particular at, at 12, or is it What's the one on Cedric? That's 12. 13. That's 13. Yeah. At 13, we need to, to, we may have to provide mitigation to those homeowners mm -hmm. for our, you know, because our we have a city ordinance that, for noise. Right? Yeah, we've actually talked about that. That we need to reach out for mitigation to those homeowners because I think that's what contributed to our casing failure at, at, at 10 is when you, when you start and stop, you know, the ground grabs the casing you got to keep the casing moving, keeping it going down, because um, we had the casing failure mm -hmm. down at you know a thousand feet. Yeah, no, that's that's important, and it'll really be interesting to on a process like this with as much money as you're talking about and, and as much um, uh, importance when we get those bids back to make sure that we're going with the lowest, most responsible. You know, that's a that's a big key. Um, so hopefully, you know, we've already reached out to some well drillers and we want to bid the project. And, uh, and we've looked a little bit at the area and trees and what they're like. The McCormick one, what shouldn't be, that's, that's out deep in the woods. The McCormick one, there's some people that live. This is. I see the map, but I... It's so if you, go past, if you go past Christ the Rock Church oh, yeah. and you're headed, you continue to head out that way, it's yes. about uh, a mile and a half. It's where the old Figley Road used to branch yeah. off. Okay. So that's where that's where our current reservoir is. Now there's a couple that lives kind of to the west, but that's quite a ways, and there's some people that live to the north, right? And that's so quite a ways. What, once again, we need to reach out to them and make sure that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do some sort of a test some testing to determine what sound, how far the sound's traveling, and. Because notices go a long way mm -hmm. yeah. to taking care of a problem right. ahead of time. Yeah. And it's one of those things, I mean, it's, yeah, it might be a frustrating four, four, five, six weeks, but it's, you know, it's kind of one of those unavoidable, um, you know, situations. So um, back to the McCormick site, we do need to talk more. Um, I talked with Ned again about that reservoir out there, so. About their reservoir, about or our reservoir our that reservoir. they may purchase from us. Right. So, Robertson. So here's, so here's the ten thousand foot conversation. Instead of Bremerton building 
the reservoir that we gave them the easement for. They have two reservoir sites. It may be more beneficial to both the city of Bremerton and the city of Port Orchard for the city of Bremerton to purchase our half million gallon reservoir out there. Why? So here's the crux. We have to build a one pointer. We are going to receive a 1.3 million gallon reservoir from McCormick. Um, Bremerton has a very viable pump station, um, but they don't have a reservoir. Um, they have to provide, uh, most likely, fire flow for the new high school. Um, that's something that they really can't do. They just don't have the, 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 the so volume. So why would they take over the service area? Because they invested a lot of money in that pump station. They're, they they're not gonna, we've, we've actually, we were joking about Having put on a different hat, it was like a deja vu conversation with the other side. If you get, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know that's where I run the, that's we, where I'm coming from. We were having that conversation and we were feeling guilty um, a little bit, but yes, they didn't, uh, they didn't budge. They, they took our they took the same position we did with that other entity. So, so what, what would most likely end up happening is we would stub an eight inch man across the road and we would agree to provide fire flow, not domestic, but fire flow for the high school because we have the storage and capability. Um, so the high, new high school is in our city, but it's in their water service area. Mm -hmm. Our serve, sewer service area. Is in... It's in our sewer service it's area. It's in our sewer, just not our water. Not our water. Not our water. And so what ends up happening is... Um, Who draws these funny lines? Yeah. What ends up happening is um, it's about two dollars a gallon to build a reservoir, and they don't want to spend a million and a half dollars to build a reservoir, or two million dollars to build a reservoir, just to provide service for fire flow for the high school. It doesn't make any sense. And so when they start looking at building a reservoir versus what they would could potentially purchase that reservoir for, I mean, it, it would save them some money. But we need a reservoir. So what we we do up, upsize the McCormick? What take the money and invested into the McCormick Reservoir? We, no, don't, really. we don't need that reservoir. If yeah. we have the new 1.3, you would just connect that reservoir through McCormick West and McCormick and you serve the same, same function. Right. So what would we sell the reservoir for? I, you know, there's a lot of components that go into that. I mean, you're probably somewhere between 500000 and $700,000. Well, that would have to see with but if we built it, a new one, it cost a million. Why would we sell it for half that? Yeah, but you've got to look at the depreciated value. I mean, that reservoir is going to need a coating system. Uh, it's going to need, you know, kind of your general maintenance items. There's also, um, you know, we have a slosh fund as far as our, our, our water is concerned out there. So one of the conversations that we had is as McCormick builds, we might need to take more water from them in the interim to allow that growth to happen as they're constructing this newer facilities mm -hmm. for us, and maybe some of that water is used as a negotiation for the price. And we're not talking about a lot of money, but. Yeah, but one is an operating side of it, and the other is a capital side. Right. Then we ideally want to keep that. I mean, yeah. Sure. You know, we want to invest capital money into capital, and right. you know, the rates drive. Right. The other, the operating side. Of it. So yeah, I mean, if it was just a, if it was just a capital deal, then I would say you're probably a. We we would have to look. We would have to really run some hard numbers, but I, I don't think it would be quite a million dollars. I think it'd be just under that. Okay. So. More to come, I guess. Yeah, more to come on that. One. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, like I said, we've we're looking at the drilling contract, um, and. But that would be started. Thirteen would be started at the same time. Close. Yeah, I mean, it's all going to happen kind of. Same company, drilling? It could be. That's how you low bid is. So we're going we're gonna to be drilling the well for 12. Right. 13. As a, I mean, for 13 as a city project. The, the 12 will be developer drilled. Right. We'll provide the same the specifications, but they'll drill that well, and then the, the water sewer overlay area that we're talking about that provides a proportional reimbursement is we're getting that complete so that that's that's really the only thing that's holding up well 12 at this point is we need to get that agreement completed right 
Wow, pretty cool. Yeah. So well 13 starting to be drilled, maybe January 1st of the year, mm -hmm. six to eight weeks drilling, hopefully. And then how soon could it actually be online? Oh, uh, that's going to be a while. Because it'll be testing. Testing, you have got to get the actual facilities constructed mm -hmm. around it, so you're going to have a pump station and a filter station. That yeah, it's like a year, sort of year and a half type thing. The only thing we have in the budget for 17 is the well <coughs> 13 well we have no we have no we will have everything done by the end of 2018 because that's our well 10 we five million dollars that we have left right right so 13 will be done whether or not we get the development agreement McCormick is really driving the process on on 12. yeah and I've got a phone call this afternoon to great crabby to let him know that we got the permit so you should be thrilled to hear that Will we have to do anything more to well 10? As far as? As it's sitting there, I mean, do we have to, we don't cap it or do anything, it just sits there pretty much as is? It's, it's fine sitting there, other than at some point we have to look at, do we want to put money into, you know, surging that and, and dealing with it, but I think that was $100,000 that we really don't want to spend right now. It's a, it's a $100,000 maybe, you know, right. I mean, it's a, are you going to get something out of it or are you not? And, Can and that screen be replaced at a future date? No. 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 You have to, because you, you can't get down there and remove it and replace it. You can't just drive it out and put a new one in? Mm -hmm. You'd have to redrill the well. Um, the screen, it, it, the screen it isn't the issue though. I mean, the screen looks great. We've seen the screen. Okay. Because um, we camera that well. It's it's something that's going on around the screen, and that's why surgeon and bailing might work. Mm -hmm. um, but you know. But well, there's no point in doing that until we we're ready to use the well. Right. right. So it just so, sits, and then and so that point we need that water potentially. Then we perform that process right. and determine if it's a viable water source and a, at what how many gallons per minute, per minute it can produce. Right. And we need we need to pass on like stories from you know, tribal stories passing on heritage that at some point some public works director and mayor and utility committee need to know that they will need to rehab that well and they and, need that water. And we are going to use it as a monitoring facility while we drill and test these new wells. So all the wells that we have, the artesian flow, um, we'll shut those wells off and watch the pressure gauges. We'll, we'll watch the total dynamic head move as we test pump 12 and 13. And then our other wells will sound them while we're, so we're gonna, we get well 13 drilled, we're gonna pump that thing at above capacity. We'll try and pump it at 1500 gallons a minute and we'll watch what our levels do and, and look at what our impacts are. Um, that's actually one of the conditions that we have in there is that we're gonna do that. And it just helps us understand know the system and, and, and how they how the which ones touch each other and which ones don't so because I remember what son was saying I don't know it was maybe Jerry one of those one of the commissioners was saying one of their wells had a capacity drop very mm -hmm. suddenly yeah well 22 a huge one yeah and they were real surprised by that and thought that that could affect the well 10 flow somehow I, I don't, I'm not. No, I mean, so when anytime you have a problem with a well, it's always, it's not always, but it's generally site specific. So um, it wasn't the whole aquifer issue. Right. I mean, if you think about the aquifer that we're tapping into, we've got evidence that says that Silverdale and Seabeck and Port Orchard and Gate Harbor, we're all tapping into this deep, deep well, um, the Fletcher Bay aquifer. Um, but in, in West Sound's case, you know, I did a little digging to find out what happened there, and, and what I was told is that they shut off a bunch of their wells and they pumped one well as hard as they possibly could for a long time. And when you do that, you can stress that well. Well, anytime you remove mass amounts of material, whether it's water, um, around, a, around a well casing, that material will dry up. If there's no, I mean, that's why we do drawdowns and we figure out how far we're, we're dropping that level. That material dries up and you've created a cavity of space. And it can happen, that material will settle and it'll all, it'll all fall right around your screen. I don't know what depth that well was screened or how many screens were in 
that well casing. But you know, we we know that it's not prudent management to just pump one well as hard as you can until it dies. You know, that's why we let wells recover and you know. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, it's standing on the beach. Tide comes in, tide goes out. You got those molecules of pore pressure mm -hmm. that keep everything in place. And when you remove those water molecules, everything compacts in. Settling. Settling can occur. Yeah. Yeah. Settling. Settling. You're still okay. Okay. So, more to come. Uh, well, nine, what you have in your packet is just what you've had in the previous months. We've got the November 1st agenda in minutes, the November 2nd conference call we had, and then we have the November 15th agenda in minutes. Um, I guess, Tom, do you want to hit the high points? Or I guess we're at the memo on the top covered it, it yeah and those are our timelines and where we're going to be at for design and so in February are we going to be ready to start preparing bid documents and, and put this out to bid for construction and this is funded in the budget correct yes the so a couple things so we did do um, so uh, schedule 2016-2017. So we're going to get 100% PS&E in 2016. Okay, we've, we've I do not right. happen to have that until February 17th. No, this is this is this was November 1st. If you go to November 15th. This memo on the top is not accurate. No, well, this remember that this these are the these were the agenda and minutes for November first and November fifteenth, and it was this meeting that led to the conversation. So we're going to have a hundred percent design by the end of the year, not yes. February seventeenth, twenty seventeen. Yes. 2017. Okay. This 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 was the this was the meeting agenda that brought up the conversation that we had with Alan Martin. Gotcha. That said, no, this isn't. Except work. Okay. And so they're they're gonna get done. A new memo would be nice from them. Um well, let me look at the we've received uh the progress yeah. so what it says in this. So the the construction is in, in twenty seventeen and one point seven million. Right. We'll have another there's in the in the in back of the packet there's a progress report that was through October. They now have the change order. Um, for that additional city added scope and all recent conversations is that they will be done I'd this like, year. I'd like it in memo format for me, yeah. spelling out that timeline because sure. that's what they committed to. Well, we've got a, I guess I've got an email that I can send you. Okay. As long as it's documented somewhere. Yeah, no, they... I don't need it. Okay, no, they, yeah, they sent an email and they're going to get it done. Um, like I said, this so this is what led to end of the year, hundred percent design, and then we'll start January, February, preparing bid documents to go out to bid. Well, bid documents will be yeah. they'll finish everything in sixteen, including right. our ad ready. So when are we seventeen? Gonna, you mean? Yeah, it's 16. It's sixteen. Oh, 16, I see. Sixteen design. Sixteen design, but when are we going to have bid documents? When are we going to bid? We'll have bid documents this year. The end of the year. That's part of their scope. So January, so we're gonna February. Go up, we're yeah, gonna we're going to go up to bid. So. Boy. I don't. <laughs> yeah, we're doing everything at once. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this year was crazy. But each year we keep thinking that's. Yeah, we're, we're going to push over the hump, but uh -huh. the hump keeps keeps getting bigger. Uh -huh. So we're going to go to bid. So we're looking at you know, going so to we bid. We should be awarding this one by spring or sooner. Yeah, this this work is. Um, it's not drilling. It's, it's just not doing drilling. that. Right. right. This is. The yeah. To bat building a new bathroom for the park. Yeah. Um, in addition and, to and the pump house. And a pump for the filtration system. Well, the pump system. house is there. It's the it's the. Well, the green sand. Sand. You, green there's the sand thing. It's right. the treatment building. Yeah. Basically. Oh, yeah. Treatment building. Yeah. So we'll have a ward in February, March. Mm -hmm. We'll also be having. Award in 
April, May for Tremont, and then we'll have so the, the well. So for Tremont for Pathway, too, in that same time frame. We're going to yeah. have three big projects. I don't know. And a well 13. And a well 13 award. Yeah. Right in there, too. So the award for 13, February? Yeah. Well, January. Uh, January. February. The actual contract award will be February. Nobody works at Christmas. And then um, the new bathrooms will be built by the summer months, do you think, when all the kids are out there again with the camps? Or do we just do porta potties for a while? We no, there's a very good chance that we won't be able to do the Boy Scout. Yeah. Because of the construction going on. We'll just have to see. It. Do they, they know? They, 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 they have know? to. They have to do the bathrooms kind of first because they got to demo the other ones. Mm -hmm. well, right. That's what but I'm the question is, is, is they take that entire vans well, and roof they, they, they could construction sense. Half, yeah. you know, half the field. They might have half the field, but they'll have a brand new bathroom. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we should. We should probably reach out to the Boy Scouts and let them know. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't know a whole lot, right? enough mm -hmm. to let them know but those are concerns mm -hmm. um, other than that you know it's yeah we're made it through our contractual hump and deadline hump and they're moving to complete what are we doing the biosolids um, so the biosolids was the uh, this is again, this is more documenting for the notes, the conversation that we had at SAC, where they were, the West End Utility District was basically pointing fingers at the city. So what did we find out? We couldn't find anything. Nothing. We went through. So I pulled boxes from the old, uh, the plans, the schedule, everything from when that. So it was designed and never, who managed the construction? I can't even find it. I, I cannot find the words. I mean, I, there's nothing in any documents. Now, I don't, I'm not saying I've looked at every document, but... No, there was something... I was trying to find what John Clausen had at the Utility yes. Committee. It was a Schedule there D. Was. There was a Schedule D of the construction contract. But what I'm that, wondering is if that, if that was nixed at some point. They said, oh, we're not going to do Schedule D. Mm. Not that we know of. So find that construct Schedule D document from the construction schedule. Okay. Right. I don't know. Somebody made somebody we, made a decision not to do it, right. or forgot about it. But it was fun. It was it was, fun it was recognized as a plant, as a plant, um, a need to improve the flows to the plant, mm -hmm. and it was in that Schedule D. Mm -hmm. You know who we remember too is Geiger. We had a conversation. With but him. verbal doesn't work. We need the we yeah. need the document. We need well. We need the to talk to John Clausen. He had all kinds of yeah. documents. I, Thomas and I already talked to John. Oh. John doesn't remember. Well, I thought John's the one that provided that. Schedule. No, we found it in our invest when we were doing the utility negotiations. It was in those agreements. It was in, it was in those agreements for the for the ILA. Right. No, I looked through all that, and I was trying to find that Schedule D. But I know that there's a Schedule D that shows. Marina Pump Station as one of the funded portions, yes. and then the design report for the treatment plant talked specifically about the Marina Pump Station because that was what John had mm -hmm. had brought to the utility committee about uh, his attempt to make the Marina Pump Station a part of the plant. Right. So it's we just have to, and maybe it's a Greg Jacoby conversation. Give him a call. It seems like it's a dropped issue at this point. It, mm. it is, but we know but we want, it'll surface. But yeah, we, we, we want to button this up that, and have our documentation to say, hey, as far as we know, this was funded, and or if it wasn't, why wasn't it? Right, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Because John, yeah, John was trying to link future improvements based on that old agreement. And I thought it was part of, it was part of that original ILA. Yes. I'll call, I'll send Greg to call me an email. He still sends me emails. Do you want those put in their mailboxes? Yes. Okay. Uh, are we still under code? Yeah, so we've got 
one roll. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. Piece, which is on the stormwater code. So, so the uh, planning department and public works. So Andrea, Nick, and Carrie, and Sarah through phone. They spent the whole day Friday. It was in person. They were. Oh, she was there. They were all locked in the conference room yeah. all day on Friday. And they got another half day planned today. Yeah, so they, um, so the, the notes I got from Andrea, talking points, uh, from the code session today, we will be adopting 1532 stormwater management with LID edits in December. This will then move to the new Title 20 in February during the code cleanup. We are doing changes to the department guidelines under a whereas statement on the ordinance and we'll do the formal adoption to all pertinent sections in February. In February? So it's not going to be December 31st? Well, that's that's for the the handbook. We're going to get the we, we, we're going to get the stuff that has to be done. Yeah. We're going to done. We, our December fifth meeting yeah. is going to be expanded by an hour for us to have our component at the city council and the, I believe the public meeting, the public meeting piece. And then one of those two meetings in December, we're going to probably the second one, the December twentieth, we will adopt, adopt the required. Stormwater component of the stormwater and then there's some pieces from code development standpoint that will trail in this in february so we have the 2005 standards right now we're going to adopt the 2012 12. standards right right which and is you LID. I, they're rushing like crazy to get projects <laughs> yeah, no. oh it's crazy out there yeah the only difference is it's it goes from uh optional to mandatory on low impact development out in the world, the issue with us is it's a complete code rewrite to get that in there. Also, what you have in the packet is a couple of Puget Sound Keeper and Puget Sound Partnership documents. Um, yeah, one of the um, the the Sound Keeper letters very telling. So as, as I think you know, in the new 2012 code, there's a matrix. And in that matrix, you have the ability to not do low impact development, even though it's mandatory. But if you don't have soils, you have the ability to prove yourself unable to infiltrate. So the Soundkeepers Alliance basically has sent a letter to the ecology saying, that's not acceptable. That the consequence of this, if they prevail, and they have EPA, if, if you didn't have soils, then you couldn't develop. This is this is a capo. Yeah. Thing. Wow. This is very interesting. This is like more to come. Wow. Okay. Okay. We'll see you guys around. Well, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. My husband was working on this all weekend. Oh, okay. and, and the impacts, what that's going to mean, yeah. how difficult that is, yeah. any kind of development. Well, it's it's near, near impossible. Yeah, if you've got hard pan or high water or clay, and yeah, it's going to render properties useless, and th that's what they call a taking. So the right. question is going to be is, is the government going to basically buy properties that have been taken through environmental regulations? So. Anyway, um, so that's that. Okay. Uh, so we have a schedule to complete, get the LID done during the time frame that we have to, to be code compliant, and then the handbook um, can be uh, in 2017. Um, so that's really that. Okay. Um, so the next meeting, December 19th, 9.30. Yeah. And? And at this point, it looks like we'll have a meeting. There's like no reason not to. We'll have the, again, it's, we'll probably have more of an update on making sure we're on target with the storm and that we had our planning commission meeting and our public meeting. They actually did have this was already taken to one planning commission. I know that it was like a scramble to get it on that 
last minute. That right. I think they got it on the planning commission, and then there's that code review group that's still looking at this. So it's even though we had a bit of a challenge with the lighthouse group and meeting the schedule that they had here that they had developed back in uh, March, we're gonna we're gonna get it done. So. Great. Okay, so I what time is it right now? 10 11. 10 11. Perfect. Thank okay, you. Well, thank you.